Okay, Slackbot is another bot. It uh, installs the registry uh, key um, in the uh, Windows folder. The uh, Z W it installs the, the registry key. Um, uh, H key local machine run software Microsoft Windows current version run, uh, so it will constantly reboot. And the program file it installs is the zwbv.exe in the Windows folder. Now that's a weird name, and you might spot it, but it's also uh, innocuous enough that it might get past you. In fact, they get past quite a few people. Um, it installs a backdoor, um, and it is also controlled via IRC client that's installed on the compromised computer. It dynamically can update the installed backdoor, so whenever there's a patch, it can download an update and, and uh, fix itself so that it will, it, it will be still uh, not affected by whatever patches a vendor may release. It can send the backdoor uh, to other IRC channels to attempt to compromise more computers, and it can download and execute whatever files the uh, bot herder or the uh, master of the bots um, decides to. Slack bot. Fatbot is a slightly different one. It, it actually uses peer-to-peer -peer, uh, technology. It, is an, it uses an AOL encrypted protocol for communications. It's pretty hard to detect, and it is a, a, a variant of the Agobot, the uh, ubiquitous Agobot, which there are so many variants of. Now, Fatbot is pretty feature-rich. It will allow you to do just about anything as, as far as mutating itself or um, communications uh, options. As I said, using peer-to-peer -peer is uh, another uh, um, uh, flexible or uh, in another range of flexibility that the bot allows for. Here's Evil Bot. This was originated in 2001. It was made. It, it was it. Uh, it uh, made its fame by crashing the uh, GRC.com. Now GRC.com is a, a security website, so it uh, was uh, ironic that it was its main target. The process name is SysEdit.exe, which looks like a system file. Uh, it's very um, uh, easy to detect now if you know what you're looking for, but sysedit in a process list looks fairly harmless. Um, it does use port 6667, which is uh, fairly common to a lot of the uh, bots that use IRC. So it, it can be easy to spot if you see that traffic. All right, how do you defend against these bots? Well, block IM and peer-to-peer -peer traffic. That's number one. Uh, there is an argument to, ma to be made that there really isn't a need for IM traffic and peer-to-peer -peer networking going in and out of a, a corporate organization. Uh, if that can be limited, then you should do so. You should cut off that traffic there and stop it at the firewall so it can't get in and infect any of the internal machines. Of course, any type of box hardening, uh, um, security patches, um, tripwire type IDSs or um, um, uh, um, integrity systems, uh, local host-based firewalls like IP tables or any other product, the black ices and, and the, the like, uh, good antivirus, um, good um, application and operating system updates and patches, good backups in case you do get infected you can revert back to a previous state. Um, most IDS nowadays uh, are capable of detecting bot traffic and of course firewalls and checking of the logs uh, religiously will, will help you defend yourself against these bots which are terribly, terribly infectious.